Hi, my name is Anton. Why one-shot learning neural networks are super cool? Because you don't need to train anything when you're working with them. You can easily prototype it, or you can easily work in situation when you don't have big enough data set. I speak about this in details in my previous video. In this video, I want to focus on a more pragmatic problem. How you can run your one-shot learning neural networks on embedded devices, on a Raspberry Pi on, or on a ROG chip boards. So let's go through this. Let's start from the clip. Clip is one of the easiest models. And when you start with clip, it's easy to use this wrapper because this repository not only have the script to export in clip into ONNX model, but also it has all possible clip models that you even can imagine. You just can download any of them by combining this S3 address and this name. And with uh, this, all the model will be already in ONNX format. To run this ONNX model, of course, you can use just part of the script, but we will speak about ONNX inference a little bit later because it's a tricky uh, SAM for embedded devices. Speaking of RKNA inference, it's pretty easy. After you will have ONNX model, you just go to this article and after that you just export your model with this six lines of code and inference your model on your device with this five lines of code. To set up your device, if you didn't do this already. Just check my previous video about RKNN and use it as an example to set up your device. Speaking of Dino V2, everything is a bit harder. First of all, you need to fix ONNX support. As you can see in this issue, it's not working out of the box. So you just can go through this and everything will start working. But be cautious because, because these lines, they are not working well. It's not correct position. So you just can go into your code. Then you go in this, into this file. In this file, you search for memory F attention, just append the regular attention here, and after that you just need to change every mentioning of this attention on your attention. Here I change it just for with small, but also you can change it for all other width models. Also, you need to change this code and you can look in the repo and copy and paste the exact code in the issues and here it how it should look like also to export the model you need to do a little trick and with this trick you need to wrap up your models like wrap up your model like this with this, you will have the correct output that you can can use. So just don't forget to export your ONNX file like this. Also, everything is already in the issue. To run your model on RKNN, you need to export it. Export is super easy with such approach. It's almost the same like the approach for the clip export. Also, I did here some sample run to verify that the model is OK. To run your model on your device, you can also 
use the simplest script. But one interesting point. I were not able to run my model without this line. I don't know if this some bugs or something like this, but without this line the results were unstable. They were changing run to run. And after I append this line, everything became pretty stable. Also, during the export, you shouldn't use quantization because it can destroy your model. And uh, you can use mean while values and std values like this, but it's you can take this from pre-processing of your specific model. When you run your model on your RKNN board, you need to run Dyna v2 small or probably Dyna v2 medium because the largest larger Dyna v2 probably will cause you some memory fault. But with Dyna v2 small, the inference speed will be around half of a second. And it's pretty easy to run. And let's return to the ONNX inference. Usually it's just enough to install ONNX runtime on your board with this simple command. But pretty often this command do not work. In this case you need to build your ONNX runtime. And honestly speaking, I couldn't build on an X like each second time on some specific board. It's pretty easy for Raspberry Pi, but for older uh, Raspberry Pi, you can even sometimes find pre-built on an X runtime version. But for some small boards, for rock chip boards and so on, you definitely need to build your ONNX runtime version. And it's a long process and it's required a lot of running time on your board. After you build your ONNX runtime, the script for run it is pretty simple. To run it, you need just a few lines of code. Of course, it's like to prepare your image and run your ONNX session. Here, how it's look like for the Raspberry Pi 3B. The inference speed sometimes a bit different, but from run to run, I get around from uh, two sec seconds to a three seconds for a inference. Probably it's depend on the temperature of the board or something else. Okay, let's stop here and discuss the important problem. What you should do if you want to run your one-shot learning neural network on a different device, not a rock chip, not a Raspberry Pi, something else. And to answer this question, you need to think about three different aspects. The first one is the inference framework. I discussed ONNX inference framework and RKNN inference framework in frameworks in this video. The RKNN inference frameworks is the, the device specific. ONNX inference is the general inference framework. There are a lot of different general inference frameworks. It's NN, NCNN inference framework, MNN, TensorFlow Lite. There are a lot of them. I will put the link in the description. Usually you can run any of these frameworks on any of the devices. And it will affect your speed and how easy it's to export your model in such frameworks. But usually on an X runtime it's the easiest one and all other will be a bit more complex. 
you need additional operations to do this. The second important aspect is the device where you can run your neural networks. There are uh, three different ways to run your neural networks on embedded devices. The first one is on CPU, the second one is on GPU, and the third one is on NPU. Usually all general frameworks can run on CPU and GPU. Sometimes it's pretty hard to run your neural networks network on a GPU. So usually you can run just on CPU and it's the easiest approach. Or sometimes, for example, in case of rock chip, you can run your neural networks on uh, NPU. But there is uh, one big problem with the NPU devices. Usually to run your neural networks on NPU, you need to run your neural network through the calibration process. It's a process that allow you to export all your weights in int 8 representation. And all one-shot learning neural networks, they are bad for this quantization process. Sometimes you can obtain some kind of good weights, but in general I do not recommend to export your one-shot learning uh, neural networks in int 8 representation. So you should choose device uh, that allow you to run your neural network in int 16, int 32, fp16 representation. And in general, you can run it on any CPU-based device, almost on any GPU-based device, and on some specific NPU-based devices. And the third aspect, it's the amount of memory on your one-shot learning, uh, on your device. Because sometimes one-shot learning neural networks, they are big. So you probably need to choose devi the device that allow you uh, more than one gigabytes of memory for your application. I think that's all. There are a lot of important videos about one-shot learning, uh, neural networks, and about different embedding devices on my channel. So feel free to subscribe and look at them. Probably it will help, help you with your problem.